morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? We're delighted to have each and every one of you here for this special Sunday. And uh, we have a lot of visitors here with us, and we're very grateful because some of ours have left for the holiday as well. And so we're grateful that you have come and uh, to help even things out. But this is a special day for Burlington Bible Church, and we're glad that you're here uh, to share in that. Several visitors. Let's see here. So good to have the Snyders times two here. And uh, it's probably a little better than juniors and seniors, isn't it? But anyway, so good to have Steve and Marlon, April, and Steve's uh, parents. And for those of you who don't know, this is Kate Loper's grandparents. And so we're so grateful to have them here. Found out something new this morning. I did not know that my grandfather pastored uh, Sister Snyder back in the 50s. So our, our families go way back there. But uh, in southern Indiana, Lagodi area, and uh, so grateful to have them here with us. And uh, let's see here, so good to have, let's see, Scott's grandma here, Sister Loper, Diana Loper, welcome. And some other family, the Kaplingers here. And uh, let's see here, Ben and Marissa Forsey are here, welcome, glad to have them here. And the Anthony family, wow, all the way from Pennsylvania visiting, grateful to have them. My family, uh, the John Stones, you can just see how many of visitors we have here today, but thank you. Thank you so very much for being here today. You know, I, I reminded the Lord this morning that He is the divine superintendent of my heart, and He is the divine superintendent of this church, Amen. and that's the way I want to keep it. And, uh, and I trust that you can say that as well, that He is the divine superintendent of your heart. It's the best place to be. It's the best life to live with him in charge. Isn't that just a, a relaxing to know I don't have to be in charge? <laughs> I don't know what he knows. And I'm glad I don't know what he knows. But I submit to his lordship. And I'm grateful to do that as a pastor, as a person. And I trust you'll join me in that as well. We are interested in the Lord being here and doing his work. I know this is a special service and a lot planned for this time this morning. But uh, part and all of it that's done is to bring glory and honor to him. He is worthy of our praise. And so from the very outset of this service, as we stand together and pray together, I want us to tell the Lord that we want him, him here, his presence, and to him doing his work among us today. Father, what a joy it is to gather together on this Lord's Day morning into your house. We thank you for those that have gathered together today, our regulars and visitors. Lord, you know all that's planned for this service today. And Lord, we want you to be the divine guest here. But not only the guest, but the one in charge in ordering this service. I pray that you would give us ears to hear what you have to say to us. You know, every heart that's gathered in and every need that's represented, none of that is overwhelming to you, but you know how to work in each and every one. And so, Lord, we open up ourselves, our minds, and our hearts to the control of your spirit. Accomplish your plan and purposes today. Accept our worship, and we'll certainly give you praise for all that you do. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Remain standing. Let's join in the singings. Brother Arndra comes to lead. In your chorus books, number 103. 103. Psalm 156 says, Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So if you're breathing this morning, that means you. And you all are. So I believe, regardless of where you come from or what your state is today spiritually, if you'll with your heart praise God this morning, I believe we can feel His presence and I believe He will honor us. So let's do that. Psalm 103.
good. Let's turn to number three in your hymnal. To God be the glory. If you've done anything in your life, it's because of Him. And all the glory, whatever that may be, goes to Him. So let's sing about that this morning. Number three. You don't hear this song sing much on Sunday morning, I don't think, but I believe it's a good one. And we have a story to tell. And if you have Jesus in your heart, you're going to tell it, right? To those who need it. There's a world out there that's desperate to hear the story. And who's going to tell them if we don't? Those of us who know Jesus. So let's sing this this morning. Sing it well. 
thank you for that good singing. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, the Apostle Paul said, I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection, his cross. Well, we just sang about it. He died for me. Aren't you grateful that he died for you this morning? Praise the Lord. So good to see all of you in the service this morning. I, I don't know. There's just something about Sunday morning that makes my heart just rise and my spirit swell. And I appreciate his presence on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. I need that. You know, as a church, we desperately need to cultivate the presence of the Lord because if our children don't feel his presence here, they'll look for something somewhere else that satisfies that inner longing. We, we need to come here and say, God meets with us here, and he does. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. Praise the Lord. We want to pray together. Brother Witt, will you join us or lead us as we pray this morning? Let me mention several requests. We want to remember our nation, the elections coming up and ask God to intervene in our country in a positive way. We want to remember several critical family needs, uh, physical needs that we need to remember. Uh, we want to remember the Redmond family, Brother Redmond and Brian, uh, Byron and his family and all of them dealing with Brother Redmond's cancer and illness. God knows how they need his help, and let's pray that God will just under undergird them and strengthen them and give them special grace. The Tallmans need special prayer. Rick was telling me this morning his mother is deteriorating and um, the mental deterioration is, is a very difficult path to travel. Some of us know about that. And uh, Mary is carrying quite a load with that. Rick's brother's carrying quite a load and Rick as well. And uh, so let's pray for them. They've had a tough week, he said, so let's remember the Tallmans. Sister Tallman Sr. as we pray this morning. We also want to remember Rachel Hodnett. This is Doug and Joan's daughter-in-law. Uh, she was critically, critically ill a few days ago, a week or so, and uh, she had a relapse and is back in the hospital, had to have another surgery, critical surgery, last night and is in very critical condition. So she needs the help of the Lord, the touch of the Lord physically and spiritually. And uh, so I want us to pray especially for Rachel Hodnett as we pray this morning. Jim Sederna also needs our special prayers. Jim faces surgery on Tuesday. He has had uh, a two-pronged challenge, really. He had an infection in his leg that landed him in the hospital, and that's still not completely over. And that kind of challenged the other surgery that was scheduled. And uh, so he planned, they planned to do surgery on Tuesday, but Jim needs our, our prayers. Let's pray God would touch the infection in his leg and help him through this surgery and get him back on his feet. Let's remember Jim as we pray. Marvin Stamper has eye surgery this week. Uh, is that Tuesday, Marvin? Tuesday. Let's remember Marvin having uh, serious eye surgery and uh, try to correct some vision problems. So let's remember that request as we pray. Are there other special requests you would like to mention as we pray this morning? George? I've got to tell you a question prayer for your pet in the way, but Esmo's uh, getting old and he's starting to have some ulcers. Mm -hmm. And we need prayer for him. And I just want to say Let's remember George and these challenges. I'm, I'm glad God is interested even in those issues that we face. I'm glad he is. Let's remember George and remember his request for his dog. I don't know that I've ever prayed for a dog before, George, but we'll do it this morning. All right. <laughs> All right. 
GBS is in revival this week? All right, let's remember that. Maybe just before prayer, the kids need to go ahead and be dismissed to go to junior church. So let's do that and we'll have prayer here in just a moment. Any other requests? Brother Dan. Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate that uh, enlightenment. I did not even know that that was happening, the uh, abortion amendment, but let's do pray. And, uh, you know, I, I think again and again, God's people need to band together to pray in these issues that God would intervene and defeat unrighteousness. That's what I want to see happen. And uh, God exalted. So let's remember that request. Let's stand together as we pray. Brother Witt, lead us. Let's join together and join him in prayer time this morning. How we thank you, our Father, that we have access to God through Jesus Christ. How we thank you that we have a great high priest. Praise the Lord. Us. Praise the Lord. Yes. The yes. That we thank have. you, Lord. How we thank you, thank Lord, you our Lord, Father. that we have oh, access grateful. to you in the hour of the day, or night, in any situation. Oh, we're God. glad, dear Lord, that we oh, don't God. have to come just with high polished yes. words. Yes. We can come with yes. Jesus, oh, help me. Oh, and, God. and you know oh, our God. needs, and you understand oh, our God. problems and our cares. Yes. We pray, dear yes. Lord, that yes. you will help us to go Amen. with confidence oh, and Lord. boldness we're trusting to the today. throne of grace. And we're we trusting you find grace to help in time Amen. We know, dear oh, Lord, Lord, that in a congregation like this, oh, there are God. many, many, many needs, dear yes. Lord. Yes. Many of those yes. go unspoken. We're we're we are even Lord. now in this time oh, of God. prayer. We confess our care upon you because we take care of and help us to bring our difficulties and our relational yes, issues and our financial Amen. issues, dear Lord, oh, and most of all our spiritual yes. issues. Yes. Help Amen. us to bring them to you, dear oh, Lord, who Lord. cares, oh, Lord. who understands, who is able to change us, you. dear Lord, and change oh, situations to bring glory oh, to your name, dear Lord. Oh, we pray today yes. that you will yes. remember yes. our yes. nation, Yes. We're in a time of great yes. turmoil. Yes. We're in a time of difficulty. Yes. We're in a time when it seems that we, we want to make you, darkness we light. Trust and you, we Lord. pray, oh, God, that oh, you will help us to be us, strong pray. as Christians. Pray to oh, help us, dear Lord, to live by the cross. Oh, Lord, help us as Christian people, dear Lord, to pray that God will send a revival starting with us. Trust you, Lord, and know that you care about these 
I want you to take your chorus book and we're going to sing chorus number 151. The key of G, God, any rivers you think are impossible. Anybody here have some things in life that seem impossible? <laughs> I tried to talk on Wednesday night about never leaving God out of the equation. Whatever you're going through, just put God into that equation. <laughs> oh, and He can do what no other power can do. Let's sing chorus number 151 together. God in isn't it? <laughs> On this Sunday morning, I don't know what you're going through, but I know one thing that God has not turned his throne over to anybody else. He is still on the throne. Praise the Lord. And I rejoice 
Now I rejoice in that factor. So you, you put that into your circumstances. You put that into your difficulties and uncertainties and fears and doubts. You put it all in there. You say, Lord, I know that you're still on the throne. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I rejoice in his goodness this morning. Well, we've already mentioned it, but it's such a joy to have each of you here. And I thank you for being here on this special occasion. I have a few announcements that I want to <clears throat> remind you of. And uh, following the service today, we want to give you a very, very warm invitation to stay for lunch and if we run out of food, we run out of food. That's not going to hurt some of us. Uh, but our, <laughs> uh, some of our ladies have prepared extra. And uh, GBS students, we welcome you to stay. Visitors, we welcome you to stay. We want you to be a part of this entire day. So be here uh, for uh, the, uh, the meal. And then after the meal, around 1.30, and we're going to have an afternoon sinkspiration a lot of things on the schedule you're not going to want to miss, and so I encourage you to stay around uh, for that. This coming Saturday from 6.30 to 8.30 is a youth get-together at the Fellowship Hall. You young people, don't forget that. Make sure you're there and ready to participate. Then next Sunday, we have a couple of new things that are starting. And uh, we have youth service beginning again at 5.15. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, Scott taking over that slot. And uh, you're not going to want to miss that. And so be here. Young people at 515, just, uh, just do whatever you have to do to tell your mom and dad you have to be there. All right? And just be there at 515, happening at the same time as a couple of other things. Uh, prayer time here in the sanctuary. And uh, what, a, what a great time to bring your young people and then spend some extra time in prayer uh, for our church and uh, for the needs of our church. So I encourage you to be there uh, for that. Also happening at 515 is something new that we're starting that's called Faith Builders Plus. Uh, you young people know... You college career age, you know that uh, Faith Builders is what we call the, the class down there uh, for 18 and up, those who have graduated and uh, going to college and starting your career and all of that. It's called Faith Builders, and uh, we're not trying to replace that at all. We want you to be a part of that, uh, that class, wonderful teachers down there that uh, just apply the biblical truth and to your life, everyday living, and so that's a valuable time. I encourage you to be there for that. But we are starting something next Sunday night at 515 called Faith Builders Plus and uh, connecting, learning, growing, and building faith together. This is for the same group of people. And GBS students, I know that uh, next week you're, in, you're starting revival. You'll not be able to participate next week. But we're going to go ahead and start it anyway, and then we want you to participate. This is something extra that will kind of uh, get you grounded and hopefully in the Word of God, but also uh, connect you in a deeper way to this congregation. And uh, we value you, and we want to, uh, to help you grow in your faith and make you feel a greater part of this congregation. And so if you can at all uh, be a part of that, we encourage you to do so. And that will again begin next Sunday evening at 515. A lot of things planned for that, and so we're looking forward to that. Also, let me mention that we do have welcome bags for GBS students out there in the foyer. And uh, we, uh, we had several bags and several students last week. And so grateful some of you that are here today receive one of those bags. If this is your first time here at Burlington Bible Church for this year, and uh, we want to, and you didn't get a bag last week, we have a bag for you as well. And uh, we encourage you to get that on your way out. <clears throat> At the close of this announcement time, we're, we're going to transition into something that is a, a great joy for me as a pastor and for us as a congregation. Section 2 of our church bylaws in paragraph 107, it reads in part, The Burlington Bible Church shall have power to grant license to preach. And it is a real joy, and uh, this, this doesn't, just doesn't happen every Sunday of the year. But it is a real joy today to grant a local preacher's license to, to Scott Loper, our incoming youth pastor. It is a real joy to do that. And so, Scott, I'm going to ask you and Kate if you will come and sit here on the front, front seat here. I won't make you face the, the congregation at this point, um, but I'm going to have you sit right there on the front row as we, as we participate in this granting of preacher's license. It's an honor, really an honor to do this um, in the presence of the Lord and surrounded by, by family and a church family that loves you. 
Paragraph 108 of our bylaws also states, whenever candidates are presented for licenses to preach, let satisfactory answers be required to the following questions. Do they know God as a pardoning God? Have they the love of God abiding in them? Do they desire nothing but God? Are they holy in all manner of conversation? Have they gifts as well as grace for the work? Have they in some toler tolerable degree a clear, sound understanding, a right judgment in the things of God, a just conception of salvation by faith? And has God given them a good degree of utterance? Do they speak correctly, readily, clearly? Have they fruit? Are they truly convinced of sin and converted to God by their labors? Have they an abiding sense of a divine call to the work? As long as these four marks concur in any person, we believe he is called of God to preach. Thus, we receive as sufficient proof that he is moved by the Holy Ghost. And I'm here this morning to tell you that all of these answers, questions I should say, can be answered in the affirmative. And we are convinced of God's call on your life, Scott. And I want you to know I'm very grateful that God is establishing you and that he's placed this call on your life. A prayer of mine has been, Lord, would you establish and call our young people? And I believe God has been answering that prayer. And Scott, you're proof of that today. You may not, may not remember this, but I, I remember several years ago at Penns Creek Camp, in one of the youth services, I preached a message during that camp on a radical commitment. And you stepped out and came to the altar that morning. I remember a few years later um, being with you at Beavertown when you sensed God calling you into the ministry. And I know that there were many other mile markers in your spiritual journey, but I'm grateful to have witnessed those two things in your life. And as none of us did, you perhaps didn't know what all those commitments meant at the time, but you were open to God's will for your life. As God, I'm so grateful that you've kept surrendered, a surrendered heart to God's plan. One verse of scripture, Paul writes to Timothy in his first epistle in chapter 3 and verse 1, If a man desires the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work. Notice Paul didn't say a glamorous work. He didn't say an easy work. He didn't say a financially profitable work. He didn't say a successful work. He said a good work. Another translation renders it an honorable responsibility. Your desire for this local preacher's license indicates you have a desire for this type of office. And Paul says that the individual who desires this office desires a good thing. Scott, I want to remind you to desire to be a preacher is a good thing. One, one individual says that a good pastor must have the strength of an ox, the tenacity of a bulldog, the daring of a lion, the harmlessness of a dove, the wisdom of an owl, the industry of a beaver, the gentleness of a sheep, the vision of an eagle, the height of a rhinoceros, the perspective of a giraffe, the endurance of a camel, the bound of a kangaroo, the stomach of a horse. But guess what he follows that with? And even then, he would not please everybody. <laughs> but it's amazing how you combine all of those characteristics from these different animals and you come up with the DNA of a preacher. <laughs> but in all that's involved and expected in ministry, it's a good work. <laughs> it's a good work. Amen. Warren and David Wearsby in their book, Ten Power Principles for Christian Service, I think Kyle will recognize the title of that book. <laughs> Share these principles for the minister. And I, I know I can't elaborate on all of them, but the foundation of ministry is character. Hmm. Maybe I should just read them slowly for it to sink in. The foundation of ministry is character. <clears throat> Without a godly character, what you build will all be in vain. The nature of ministry is service. Jesus himself set the example. The motive of ministry is love. The measure of ministry is sacrifice. The authority of ministry is submission. 
The purpose of ministry is the glory of God. The tools of ministry are the word of God and prayer. The privilege of ministry is growth. And I would say both personal and those in your congregation. The power of ministry is the Holy Spirit. And the model of ministry is Jesus Christ. Scott, may these same ten principles guide your life of ministry. One translation of Proverbs 25, 11 says, Timely advice, or the King James says, a word fitly spoken, is as lovely as golden apples in a silver basket. As I think about this good work you're called to, <clears throat> there's a lot of timely advice that could be given. But we have only a short time and we have three preachers to share that advice. I've divided the advice into three categories. I've asked Daryl to share words of challenge. I've asked your father to share words of caution. And then I'll close with a few words of commission. So, Brother Daryl, I'll turn it over to you, after which Brother Loper will have. Well, I, uh, as I tried to put together what I wanted to say, Every time I look at it, I'd grab my pen and write, write something else. So, Scott, I, I don't know if you're going to get to preach this morning or not. <laughs> <I'd>, <clears throat> Regina and I joined with Brother and Sister Loper in, in just the greatest of joy to participate in commissioning the Loper's son and daughter-in-law. And... Uh, Joining with your parents and your grandparents, I know Kate's parents would be here, but they're, they're involved in the ministry and they're filling a church today. And some of your grandparents get to be here. They've asked me to share words of challenge and I'm going to try to do this in a bullet, uh, kind of a, a bullet sequence here, you know, just quickly. Uh, we, could, we could expand on all of these, but I'm going to try to resist that. But My first challenge is, Scott and Kate, you are embarking on a lifetime calling. There isn't an expiration date. I challenge you to study, to read, to prepare. This will be done in secret when no one's watching, looking over your shoulder. You can skim over that part, but don't do it. That'll mean you'll have to limit social media to do the study, the reading, the preparing. I challenge you to seek the fullness of the Holy Spirit for your ministry. There is no substitute for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I, I challenge you to preach with passion and compassion. I challenge you to love people, the good, the bad, and the indifferent. The ones who support you and the ones who give you nothing. The smart and the simple love people. I challenge you to let go of the hurts of ministry. The hurts are a devastating load to carry. Give them to the Lord. I challenge you to serve with joy. Ministry is not about self-interest or fulfillment or praise, but service to God and to people. Serve with no expectation of return, personally. Serve humbly when you get praise. Serve faithfully when no one notices. Do the upfront service, but I challenge you to not forget that the nuts and bolts of service get done when no one's watching. Don't worry about who gets the credit for your service. Ministry, service, in its very essence, is service to God, to His kingdom, His cause and for his glory. I challenge you to remember and seek to advance an eternal kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. There's an awful lot in ministry work that to me is very close to earthly. 
But I think that falls in the category of the wood, hay, and stubble. We're working for an eternal kingdom. I challenge you to not let there be a time when service to God becomes service to self. I challenge you because self-service is doomed to dissatisfaction, failure, and frustration. And God cannot bless and will not bless self-service. Serve and do it with joy. I challenge you to stay out of debt. Boy, that's pretty practical, isn't it? <laughs> I challenge you to keep your relationships with your wife and family healthy, Scott. You will not have to neglect your family to be faithful in ministry. In all of your service, don't forget service to your family. I challenge you to not worry about success. Don't seek success. Seek to be faithful. Faithful to a heavenly calling. And God will take care of the success end of things. Successful ministry that is not faithful ministry is failure. I challenge you to stay true to your heritage. God chose what heritage you would be born into Scott and Kate, you both have a good heritage. I thrill to realize and look back at your heritage. Many of your contemporaries will stray away to try uncharted pathways that are the product of unspiritual minds. Don't do it. I want to thank you and I want to thank God for your commitment to the conservative hole in this crowd. Thank you. That's your heritage. That's our heritage. And I want to tell you, this is a good way. It is a good way. You'll get 40 or 50 years down the road, and that'll happen quicker than you think. <laughs> and you'll thank God you stayed true. Scott and Kate, <clears throat> we pledge you our love and our support. We pledge to you to pray earnestly daily for you and your ministry. We're on your team. You're on our team. We're locking arms together today. We promise to not be critical and fault-finding, but to love and support you and to lock arms to see God's eternal kingdom advance. God bless you. Scott, I promise to be critical and fault finding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, wow. When Pastor Stroud reached out to me to uh, share in this time, uh, he said two minutes, and so I'll try to do that. I, uh, the first thing that I thought of is uh, the fact that uh, Scott and I, if you don't know it, are very much alike. And uh, it causes me great um, trepidation for him as, as he goes into the ministry full time, um, because I know and uh, he's driven, he's opinionated, and he can see what needs to be done, and uh, sometimes no one else can do it as well, and so you just do it. And as I reflect on my life and the caution that I would offer myself, um, and it would be very simple, uh, don't get so involved in ministry that you neglect your family. I... Uh, I didn't want to be known as lazy. I didn't want to be known as someone who shirked their responsibility in many days as a pastor. My day began at 5 a.m. at a restaurant and would end at 10 o'clock at night at a hospital call. And Melissa was at home with you. And uh, if that happened once, most of us would say that's just the nature of the call. 
but that was day after day, week after week, month after month. And uh, so I would caution you, make sure that you do not neglect your family. And second is very close to that, and that is never neglect doing for being. The most important thing is that your relationship with Jesus Christ is primary. And you can go out and make a thousand calls, knock on thousands of doors, eat breakfast at three different restaurants a morning, but if you're not keeping your spiritual life alive, you're missing it. I caution you, stay close to Jesus. Stay close to Cade and Charlotte, and God will bless you for it. Thank you both for your excellent advice. And my words of commission uh, that I'm supposed to share are found in four short statements that I will give. First of all, walk with God one day at a time. Preach the word one message at a time. Reach the world one person at a time. And serve the church one task at a time. I know that we, we are people that often multifacet and do different things. But each task is important in building the kingdom of God. This time, Brother Tim, I'm going to turn this, this pulp, mic at all, pulpit, or not the pulpit, I'm sorry, this handheld mic on. And Scott, Scott I'm going to ask you to come and kneel at the altar here. And uh, we're going to pray over you as you receive this local license. Just kneel right here. And I'm asking the board members that are here. I know we have some that are gone. The board members and other local ministers that are here. If you would gather down front with uh, Daryl, Brother Loper, and myself. And come on this side of the altar. Um, Brother Witt, you're welcome to join us. Brother Sutherland, you're welcome to join us. Any of the ministers to come on this side of the altar. And then I'm asking the other men in, in our congregation to gather around Scott and any of his family that would like to come gather around him for this time of prayer. I invite you to do that at this time. Jesus, we come to you at this time to thank you for that divine call that comes from you to mere humans. And today, Lord, we're pausing in the midst of this service to thank you for the call that you placed on Scott's life. Lord, we do not know the future as you do. We do not know the plans that you have. But, Father, we do know this much that we can trust you. We know that you will not lead us astray. And so today, in this inauguration of Scott's ministry, I pray, oh God, that you would anoint and you would bless and you would help. Not so that he can receive undue credit, not so that he can have an ego, but oh God, would you do it so that the kingdom of heaven would be advanced? Would you do it so that men and women could come to you? Would you do it, Lord Jesus, so that your kingdom would advance, we pray. Lord, I pray as he leads that you would give him compassion and grace. As he leads, I pray that you would help him not to drive and not to use the word as a bully pulpit. But Lord, would you help him to do it with compassion and grace and commitment to your word and the fidelity of it. I pray that you would bless his home, bless Cade and Charlotte. Lord, would you now work in them, make them faithful ministers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Scott, this license certifies you as a local minister of the Burlington Bible Church. And in part it reads, by presenting this document, we place our confidence and prayers in you to preach the word and to exhort with all long-suffering the doctrines and commandments of the Holy Bible. Amen.
Take your hymnals. We're going to turn to hymn number 190. We're going to sing two verses of the charge to keep I have. What a privilege is ours to participate in this special presentation. This time the Lopers are going to come and minister in song. The Lord bless them as they minister.
can say amen, right? Praise God for his grace that made the difference in our life. Praise the Lord. Well, it's a real joy to invite Brother Scott Loper to the pulpit here to share the morning message with us. Let's open our hearts, let's open our Bibles, let's open our minds, even our eyes, and let's receive what God has to say to us through Brother Scott this morning. God bless you. Well, it's a privilege to be here this morning, and thank you, Pastor Stroud and Pastor Stetler, for having me at Burlington Bible Church. I don't take this lightly at all. And I am thankful for what God's going to do. I am excited where God's going to lead us and this church and the youth department especially. And I'm excited to see where God's going to take us and lead us. And I have no bad negative things to say. And so I'm excited to see what God's going to do at Burlington Bible Church. Well, if you take your Bible and turn with me to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, and we're going to begin our reading with verse number 1. We're going to go all the way down to verse number 9. In Joshua chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1. Now, I know this is against protocol, but and this is my first service, so this, make, this is ne- dangerous. And I know Dad's very der- nervous right now. But he got me. I, my birthday was a couple days ago. And I was in the cafeteria, and he had the whole school sing to me for my birthday. But today happens to be his anniversary. (laughs) Their 50th. No. (laughs) So now I got him back. So he tried to sneak it on me. He had friends sing, so it wasn't on him. But I found out. So happy anniversary. And it's so good to see some family here, Grandma and Kate's family. Thank you for coming, Scott, Suzanne. Thank you. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead, and now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all the people, unto the land which I do give them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that I have given unto you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness in this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of good courage, for under this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance of the land, which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest observe and prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Lord, would you help us in this time this morning? We thank you for your word. We thank you that we are able to gather here to hear your word proclaimed. Would you help us this morning in your name? Amen. Transition is a natural event in humanity. Transition has occurred all throughout history. And as you read down through the chapters of Genesis, you encounter one transition after another. Later in... As we read through the Bible, we see how kings came and went. And we notice how God led prophets to Israel and how transition would happen. Transition is natural. And on this Sunday morning, we find ourselves in the midst of another transition. But in the life of Joshua, we notice that another transition is happening here in Joshua chapter 1. And that's happening not only in Joshua's life, but the life of Israel. The Moses... Their servant, their leader is dead. And now a new leader is coming onto the scene. 
You see, except for Joshua and Caleb, the old generation of Israelites, they had perished during the nation's wanderings in the wilderness. And Joshua was chosen to lead the new generation into a new challenge. And that was to conquer the promised land. Transition was happening. But in the midst of that transition, we find that God was with Joshua. And friends, no matter if it's the transition of your life, there's life transitions all around us, or whatever you're facing right now, you can find comfort and rest in Him. You may be going through the transition of a college student going to college. You may be a parent whose child has gone away to college, or you may be a student right now in college, and you find yourself in transition. Maybe it's a new job or a new home, a new community. It's all transition. And what I want us to understand this morning is that we can find comfort and rest in the fact that God is going to be with us in the midst of life's transitions. So we notice in verse number one how we can find at least acceptance in the transition. Verse number one says, and we find that you have to be a faithful servant. Moses was a faithful servant, and we read in Hebrews chapter 11, it reads, By faith Moses, when he became of age, refused to be called son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God, rather to enjoy the passing pleasures of sin, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. He looked to the reward. Moses had his priorities in the right spot. He had his eye on the goal, and he was a servant for God. If you want comfort that God is going to be with you in the midst of life transitions, you're going to have to be a servant for God. To be a servant for God means to be surrendered to Christ, knowing that your sins are forgiven, knowing that you're walking in the light that God has given you, and trusting and resting on His promises and living the results up to God. He's God, I'm not, and that's fine. Are you surrendered this morning? I hope so. Now, I know that surrender can be scary. At least it is for me. When I was young, and I know I still am, I had no idea what I was doing, where I was going, how I was going to get to where I was going. And that's scary for me. I like to have everything planned out. I like to know what I'm going to do. And I like to know how I'm going to do it. And I like to know how long it's going to take me to do it. I just like to know. But when you surrender to Christ, you may not know some things. That can be a little nervy. Nervy is not a word, but that you might. You'll learn as I'm a, (laughs) my parents are laughing. I, I make up words. I'm sorry. I'm not refined. This is my first Sunday, so I've got to, I can't make up words. So, (laughs) makes you, makes, now I've got to get back. But to be surrendered can be a little nervous, not nervy, nervous. But Christ asks some things of us that might be scary. He asks some of us to do things that we may not like. I'm sure some of you here have God's asked you to do something that you're just a little bit uncomfortable about. He's asked me. But friends, we must remember that we are servants of Christ, fully resting in the fact that God's in charge and He's the one that we can rest on. If you want the comforting presence of the Almighty God, you must be surrendered to Christ. But not only do you have to be surrendered to Christ, we find in verse number 7 that you're supposed to be strong and courageous. It says, only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou may observe, and thou prosper whithersoever thou goest. If God's called you to do something, and you're not sure if you can do it, or if you're scared to do it, what are you to do? You're to be strong and courageous. Know that the Almighty God of the universe is walking with you. If He's with you, nothing is impossible. Think about what Josh, God was calling Joshua to do. He was calling him to lead a nation. 
And I'm not sure what God's calling you to do. He may not be calling you to lead a nation, but he's calling you to do something. Be strong and courageous. Maybe he's calling you to help in junior church as the kids are meeting right now. Maybe he's helping you or calling you to ride the bus next Sunday morning. Or maybe he's even asking you to mentor a team. If you're a servant for God, he's going to call you to do something. Be strong and courageous about it. I read a story the other day about a man bragging that he had cut off the tail of a man-eating lion with a pocket knife. Miraculous. He was then asked, since he had gotten so close, why he hadn't cut off the lion's head while he was at it. And he paused for a moment, thought about it, kind of sheepishly said, well, someone had already done that. <laughs> Courage. That would be me. <laughs> God's calling some of us to do some things for him that, we, that requires a little bit of courage. Friends, if God's with you, if you're his servant, go out and be strong and courageous for him. Remember that the God who spun this world into existence is in control of what he's already called you to do. God in Joshua's day had already given the children of Israel the land. It was their responsibility to step out in faith and claim it. The lessons for God's people today is clear. God has given us all spiritual blessings in Christ. And if we step out by faith and claim them, he has set before his church. We can claim those spiritual gifts because we can be strong and courageous because God is with us. God has also promised Joshua the victory over his enemies. If Israel obeyed that the Lord, what the Lord had called them to do, they could be strong and courageous and go out and fight the battles that God had told them to fight. God has prom promised us many blessings, and he may be calling some of us to go claim those blessings for him. Go out and claim what God has called you to do by being strong and courageous. How do you find rest in life's transitions? Well, first, you have to be a servant. Second, you have to be strong and courageous. And third, you have to stay connected to the source. Now, you may be thinking, why would you say that? I'm already a servant. I'm already going out to be strong and courageous. I'm doing miraculous things for God, or I'm doing things for God. Why are you saying I need to be connected to the source? I'm already connected. Well, Israel had been connected to the source. They had been given instructions to go fight the battles that God had given them. But they soon got sidetracked because they did not stay connected. If you're given instructions for a building project and they told you they wanted a building 13 feet high by 30 feet long, and that's all they told you, who here could build that? Now, I know a few could. Anthony Arnder probably could, and Tim Stamper, I'm sure, could. And a few others, Anthony Paulus definitely could. But for me, I would like to know a few more instructions. I would like to know what type of building, at least, if you would like a metal roof or if you would like a shingled roof. I would just like to know what type of building I'm going to be building. I'd like instructions. And what I'm trying to convey is that if God gives you a task, go do it, be strong and courageous about it, but always stay connected to his word and prayer because as you're working on that task, he may add or subtract from what he's told you to do. And if you're not connected to the source, you may lose out on some area that God has called you to do. Stay connected. Many people come to church and they fellowship with the believers, but they can get sidetracked because they don't stay connected to the word and through prayer. Friends, stay connected to his word. Study it. Hide it in your heart. Quote it. Pray over it. Stay connected. So to ensure the presence of Christ in the midst of transition or whatever you're facing, be a surrendered servant, be strong and courageous, and stay connected to Christ. Lastly, 
If, you, if we all know that he has promised to be with us, and we're a surrendered servant, and we are committed to doing what he has called us to do, and we're being strong and courageous. Verse 9 gives us a hope that I love. And it says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, nor dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee. Wherever, wherever you go. God has commanded us. We're going to go out and be strong and courageous. We're going to do what he said. We're going to be a committed, surrendered servant. And we can find the rest and the hope and life transitions that he's going to be with us. A wise man once said, God's commandments are still God's enablements for those who obey him by faith. For God, nothing, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. And in the years to come, whenever Joshua faced the enemy and he was tempted to be afraid, he would remember that he was a man that had a call of God stamped on his life and the fears would vanish. Whenever things went wrong and he was tempted to be dismayed, he would recall God's command and take new courage. Like Moses before him and Samuel and David after him, Joshua had a divine mandate to serve the Lord and do his will. And that mandate was sufficient to carry him through. Friends, I don't know what life is giving you right now. I don't know what transitions are happening in your life. But whatever you're facing right now, if you're a committed surrendered servant for Christ. You can find rest and comfort and hope that He is going to walk with you. A song comes to mind and it says, through so many dangers and toils of this life I've already come. But He keeps on giving the grace and the strength to just keep pressing on. He's given a promise and I'm going to stand On every word, his holy word is said, and holding his hand, I'll never fear what lies ahead, for I'm going to make it. He's already said that I would, and I'll keep on trusting that he's working everything for my good. He walks beside me, and heaven is in my view. I'm going to make it through. Friends, this morning... In the midst of life's transitions, or whatever you're facing right now, you can find comfort and rest that God will be with you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Scott. Wonderful words of challenge for us. Really, life is just a sum total of a lot of transitions. Some of them small, some of them big, all of them important. And what wonderful words of advice. Thank you, Scott, for sharing those with us. We're going to make a great team. He makes up words, and uh, I do too. You heard me call him Scat instead of Scott. So <laughs> we're, we're going to just work really well together. And <laughs> Oh, exciting days ahead. <clears throat> At this time, we are going to officially install scat scott (laughs) as youth pastor of burlington bible church so i'm going to ask scott and kate if they will come and face me stand right here in the middle of the aisle in front of the altar for this final part of the service i'm going to read a charge to the pastor scott i charge thee now before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Scott, will you accept this charge? If so, will you please answer, I will with God's help. Now I'm going to ask you to turn and face the congregation. Not to make it awkward, but I, I have a charge to the congregation I would like to read. Now, you who comprise this congregation, I urge you to receive as your youth pastor, Scott Loper. Accept the word of God that he shall faithfully preach to you, just as we've heard this morning. 
and submit to the godly discipline that he shall exercise to lead you into all holiness of life. See that your children and youth shall receive instruction in the Christian faith under his counsel. Bring them faithfully to the house of God where they will sit under his ministry. Pray for him. Honor and esteem him. Remember the words of the Apostle Paul. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Congregation, if you will accept these obligations, will you please rise and say, we will with God's help. Having received your promise, Scott, and the pledge of this congregation, I install you, Scott Loper, as youth pastor of Burlington Bible Church in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The congregation may be seated. I'm going to ask my wife to join me here on the platform. Scott and Kate, we are delighted to have you join the team here at Burlington Bible Church, and we have a a couple of things we'd like to give you as a token of our appreciation for accepting this position. a plaque that says Reverend Scott Loper, pastor, and uh, we hope that both of these things remind you of your confidence for this new position. I guess it's not a plaque, it's a little name, name desktop plaque. All right. So we welcome you in this, uh, in this capacity, and uh, I'm going to encourage everyone to file around the front here and welcome them as a youth pastor and wife, and uh, but before we do that, I, I have another quick announcement. So I'm actually going to ask Daryl and Regina to come to the front here right now and join Scott and Kate at, uh, at the altar here. And I'm catching them a little bit off guard here. But <clears throat> Daryl and Regina began their tenure as assistant pastor at this church in 1995. And it wasn't uh, too long after that. Some of you were around back then. And, uh, but it wasn't long until they transition to pastor and they served for 27 years until recently they they were planning to retire and uh, during this time of transition of me assuming the role of pastor uh, he agreed to being interim associate pastor for six months while I began the search of someone to help me with the responsibilities that would be mine and so really September 1st completed that six months of the interim associates but I'm so thrilled this morning, and I don't think I'm going to make up a word, but maybe a word that shouldn't be necessarily in the pulpit, but I'm just a little giddy to tell you this morning that their tenure is not over at Burlington. The board voted Tuesday night, and the membership was informed Wednesday at the membership meeting that the Stettlers have agreed to stay on as visitation pastors. So their tenure is not over, and we are blessed to have them on staff. So... This, this is not really an installation for them. It's kind of a recommissioning of service. So this is, this is a halftime position. Now, we were talking about this, and we thought about getting a jacket for at least Regina that says, call me if you need me half the time. <laughs> or, <clears throat> so... This position doesn't mean that my wife and I won't be doing visitation, but it hopes, we do hope that it will mean that you'll be better cared for. So, Cheryl, if you'll join me again, we have another presentation at this time.
So, Daryl, you have made the world go round at Burlington for 27 years, and we need you to continue to do that now. And, Regina, you have shared the love of Jesus in a beautiful way and have ministered to so many in so many different ways, and we're thrilled that you're able to continue to do this. I, I told some people that I think they were going to do it anyway. They might as well get paid for it. So, uh, <laughs> it's just kind of in the DNA. And by the way, just, just a little addendum to that. We're, we're not letting her squirm off the piano bench. She's been trying to because she doesn't want people to think that, that the piano bench goes with a, a pastoral, senior pastoral position. But um, there's nothing like her playing for our congregation, singing, and we're going to try to keep convincing her of this. So uh, we're, we're going to do our best to keep her on the piano bench. <laughs> We'll tell you why. If you go to the piano, we'll dismiss with a song. And, <laughs> no. <clears throat> no. Okay, seriously, we do want to welcome both of these couples, and so I'm going to invite you to stand, and we're going to go over to this side aisle, and as you leave and after you shake hands with them, uh, you consider, consider yourself dismissed, make your way down to the fellowship hall to participate in the, uh, the dinner that's provided, and we welcome you to do so. God bless these two new additions to the Burlington Bible Church.